Hello from Who Died Today America, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Very sad news. British actress Vicky Richards passed away this week at her home in Trinidad. She was 79 years old. The details are still coming out, but it looks like she might have been the victim of a robbery. Local police reported that they found her hands bound when they arrived at the scene, but there were no other signs of violence. A friend who hadn't heard from Vicky since Tuesday grew concerned and went to check on her, only to discover the tragic situation. This is especially heartbreaking because Vicky reportedly had early-stage dementia, and her family was just about to get someone to stay with her for extra support. Vicky Richards may not have been a household name globally, but she had a successful career in British film and television. Her most famous role was in the 1973 black exploitation film Black Snake, but she also had memorable appearances in projects like The Love Factor, 1969, and the television series The One Din Line. People who knew her work are remembering her fondly as a talented actress who helped shape British cinema and TV in the 1960s and 70s. Her family is understandably devastated by her loss, and everyone who appreciated Vicky's acting is in mourning. The Trinidadian police are still investigating the circumstances surrounding her death, and hopefully they'll be able to find whoever is responsible for this tragedy. Vicky Richards will be remembered for her talent, her spirit, and the characters she brought to life on screen. Rest in peace, Vicky. We lost a Hollywood veteran this week. Actress Jean Allison passed away peacefully at 94. Born in 1929, she spent decades gracing our screens with her acting talents, leaving a lasting impression on fans of both classic television and cinema. Jean started out on TV in the 50s and quickly became a familiar face. Whether you were watching a classic Western like Gunsmoke or Bonanza, or tuning into a more dramatic show like Dr. Kildare or Owen Marshall, there was a good chance Jean Allison would pop up. Her versatility even landed her roles in shows with a bit of a different vibe, like the anthology series One Step Beyond. No matter the genre, Jean brought her talent and charisma to every character she played. But her talents weren't limited to just one medium. Jean also had a successful movie career that spanned decades. Her filmography is a mix of interesting projects, starting with films like Edge of Fury and Devil's Partner in the 50s and 60s. She kept up the momentum throughout the 70s and 80s, appearing in movies like Bad Company and Hardcore. On top of all that, Jean did a bunch of made-for-TV movies. Titles like Aaron Spelling's The Death of Me Yet and The Elevator, as well as The Strange Possession of Mrs. Oliver, show the range of projects she took on. Throughout her career, Jean consistently proved herself as a versatile and respected actress in Hollywood. With her passing, it's the end of an era for classic TV and movies. But Jean's legacy will live on. The characters she brought to life, no matter how big or small the role, will always be remembered. Her contributions to the entertainment industry, both on screen and behind the scenes, are a lasting testament to her talent and dedication. Rest in peace, Jean. Sad news for British TV fans, actor Colin Bennett passed away. Colin was a big deal in the UK, especially for families who grew up watching him in the 70s and 80s. He was a graduate of the prestigious Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, where he impressed everyone so much they named him the most promising actor of the year. This launched him into a career that would see him become a fixture on British TV. Many will remember him fondly for his role as Mr. Bennett, the accident-prone but lovable caretaker in the BBC children's programs Take Heart and Heartbeat. Working alongside the beloved artist Tony Hart, Colin's on-screen mishaps and friendly banter were a highlight of these popular kids' shows. 
but Colin's talents went far beyond children's television. He proved to be a versatile entertainer, showcasing his range by presenting shows for adults like Night Shift and You Should Be So Lucky. He even lent his voice to characters in shows like The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, proving he could handle both comedic and dramatic roles. His talents weren't limited to acting. He also wrote for TV shows like Captain Zepp, Space Detective, and Luna, and even directed plays. In fact, in 1978, he appeared in and directed a musical version of The Point, alongside Davy Jones and Mickey Dolenz, showcasing his well-roundedness in the entertainment industry. Colin's passion for acting extended to the stage as well. In 1987, he wrote a play called Hancock's Finest Hour, which chronicled the life of legendary British comedian Tony Hancock. The play was a hit, and the fact that it got revived in 2008 with a new actor is a testament to the enduring impact of Colin's writing and storytelling ability. After running his own production company for many years, Colin had to retire from acting in 2002 due to health reasons. However, his love for the craft never died, and he eventually returned to performing. His passing marks the loss of a talented and versatile artist whose work enriched British TV, theater, and film. Colin Bennett's legacy will live on through the laughter and entertainment he brought to audiences of all ages for generations. Rest in peace, Colin. You'll be missed. We lost a rising star this week with Nick Sheridan, a fantastic BBC Scotland presenter who passed away way too young at 32 after a short illness. The BBC announced the sad news, and everyone who knew Nick or enjoyed his work is heartbroken. Nick joined BBC Scotland in 2018 and quickly became a favorite presenter for shows like Reporting Scotland, Drive Time, The Nine, and Seven Days. People loved his down-to-earth personality and how he could connect with viewers. He was also a great journalist, known for his tough questions and insightful reporting. His colleagues at BBC Scotland are especially devastated. Gary Smith, the head of news, said Nick was more than just a talented journalist. He was a wonderful person with a great sense of humor and a kind heart. He always had a way of making everyone around him feel happy. Nick wasn't just a broadcaster. He was also a writer of children's books. Even Scotland's first minister, Hamza Youssef, paid tribute to Nick, calling him an amazing journalist and a great friend. Nick's career started in Ireland at RTE News Today, where he presented a young person's news show. He then moved on to the main newsroom, working on foreign affairs before heading to BBC Scotland. There, he started as a researcher and worked his way up to camera journalist, correspondent, and finally, presenter. No matter what he did, Nick was always dedicated to telling great stories. Even though he wrote children's books, Nick stayed involved in broadcasting as a freelancer. His passing leaves a huge hole in journalism, literature, and the hearts of everyone who knew him. We'll miss Nick Sheridan, his talent, and his passion for storytelling. Rest in peace, Nick. Broadway lost a legend this week. Linda Balgord passed away at 64 on March 5th in Florida. She wasn't always on the Great White Way through. Her journey started in a small town far from the spotlight, New Lisbon, Wisconsin. Born in 1960, Linda always dreamed of acting, even as a kid. She wasn't just passionate about it, she was determined. This drive led her to college where she honed her craft, eventually landing roles at theaters in Wisconsin and Chicago. It was her performance in Sunday in the Park with George at Chicago's Goodman Theater that really got things rolling. Scouts noticed her talent and charisma, and she knew it was time to take the next step. She moved to New York in 1990 and quickly snagged the lead role in a national tour, which led to her Broadway debut in Passion. From that point on, her career skyrocketed. Linda's powerful voice and exceptional acting talents landed her some of the most coveted roles on Broadway. She was personally chosen by Andrew Lloyd Webber, the legendary composer, to play Norma Desmond in Sunset Boulevard. This wasn't just any role. It was a dream come true for many actresses, and Linda absolutely nailed it. But wait, there's more. 
Linda also holds the distinction of being the last actress to play Grisabella in the original run of Cats on Broadway. That's a huge deal for musical theater fans. If that wasn't enough, she originated the role of Queen Elizabeth I in The Pirate Queen, and even played Madame Jury in the iconic The Phantom of the Opera. No matter the role, Linda brought the same intensity, grace, and dedication to the stage, captivating audiences and wowing critics. The theater wasn't just her career, it was her life. She met her husband, stage manager Andrew Fenton, while working on a production of Aspects of Love in Toronto. They were a perfect match, two passionate souls who shared a love for the theater and a deep respect for each other's talents. Their partnership was a beautiful thing, both on and off the stage. While everyone is heartbroken over Linda's passing, they're also celebrating her incredible talent and the magic she brought to Broadway. Her powerful and graceful performances will continue to inspire actors and theater lovers for years to come. Linda Balgard's legacy is undeniable. She was a true Broadway legend, and she'll never be forgotten. Rest in peace, Linda.